50-win season since 2017. Paul George scored 23 of his 39 points in the fourth quarter to spark the comeback. Congrats to South Carolina women's basketball coach Dawn Staley. South Carolina beat Iowa to win the NCAA National Championship and cap an undefeated season at 38-0. Third national title for Staley at South Carolina. Tiger Woods is planning to play in the Masters this week. Barring any physical setbacks, the 48-year-old Woods will tee off in the first round on Thursday. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBL LA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Talk about. Hi, I'm Tavis Smiley. And I'm Captain Mayor Emma Sharif. You have no doubt been hearing promos and expert conversations on our various weekday shows and downloading details at KBLA1580.com about our climate justice campaign, which is now in full effect. The city of Compton is pleased to partner with KBLA Talk 1580 to celebrate Earth Day 2024 as we serve, share, and help our city shine. And KBLA Talk 1580 is just as excited to join the city of Compton as we broadcast live and bring our KBLA delegation with us to help clean and beautify our community, and you are invited to join us. Come meet us on Saturday, April the 20th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton as we fan out to clean up our city. The first 50 KBLA listeners to hit our website at kbla1580.com will receive a free KBLA tea when you join us on Saturday morning, April 20th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in Compton. Now, no show, no shirt, but sign up at kbla1580.com right now to help us clean up Compton as part of Earth Day 2024. We will see you on Saturday, April the 20th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 212 West Cypress Street in the city of Compton to do our part for Earth Day 2024. We are KBLA Talk 1580, caring about the climate, caring about the community, cleaning up Compton. Live from historic Lamert Park in Los Angeles, California. I'm Tavis Smiley, and I'm so glad to see you and me mm, back in stride again. Before we get started with today's show, let me invite you to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at the Real Tavis Smiley, and get updates on X, that's formerly Twitter, at Tavis Smiley. By the way, should you miss any part of today's program or want to catch up on previous shows, you can always visit the Show.com. That's the Show.com, or wherever you get your podcast and listen to the Tavis Smiley podcast version of this live program at your leisure. Another great show on tap for you today. In our second hour, Duke economist William Darity is back to update us on wealth inequality in the Trump-Biden era. The president, uh, that is Joe Biden, uh, made some comments during his uh, recent State of the Union address about uh, black wealth. Uh, and Dr. Darity says it's not exactly true what President Biden told you during his speech. We'll talk about that and more with uh, noted economist William Darity in our second hour. In our third hour, we'll talk politics with the former press secretary for Bernie Sanders, now host of the Bad Faith podcast and co-host of the Hills program Rising, the always outspoken and never shy to speak her truth, Brianna Joy Gray joins us today in Hour 3. But we commence this show with author and scholar Mark Lamont Hill, who I check out regularly on his YouTube channel, doing some good work there, at Mark Lamont Hill Official, at Mark Lamont Hill Official. I'm pleased to welcome Mark 
Lamont Hill back to this program. Before Mark and I commence our conversation, though, a special programming note. The official announcement uh, will be released to the media tomorrow. The media finds out tomorrow, but you're special, so you get to hear about it right about now. Dr. Cornell West, noted scholar and independent candidate for president, will announce his vice presidential running mate exclusively on this program Wednesday, April 10, during our first hour. So be sure to tune in this Wednesday uh, during our first hour for a full hour with Dr. West and his running mate, who will join us live in studio. That's an exclusive for this program this Wednesday. Again, in our first hour, uh, Dr. West and his running mate, he makes the announcement here first, and uh, I'm honored that he chose this program uh, to do that. Uh, And uh, we'll do it uh, again Wednesday in our first hour, so be sure you're checking us out uh, every day, but certainly on Wednesday during uh, hour one. Mark Lamont Hill, since you're on with me live today, I assume you are not the running mate, but as I recall, you got a long streak uh, as an independent voter, like what, 24 years? That's right. Um, wh- why, would, <laughs> why would you vote independent for so long? That's over two decades, man. It's the choices. It's the choices. Yeah. You know, I just couldn't, I could, you know, I've been, I've been a Green Party member for a long time. Mm-hmm. But I never want to be beholden to any single party in terms of, as a black person, i got to always be strategic. Now, I will say, I voted Biden in 24, and that was the first time that I didn't uh, make this choice. Right. And uh, I did it because, I'm sorry, not in 24, in 20, excuse me. And Mm -hmm. I did it because I had no choice, man. The country was on fire. People were dying of COVID. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't imagine another Trump president. I just couldn't imagine. in some ways, I voted my fear more than my, my aspirations, mm-hmm. uh, but but I had to do it. But I didn't vote Obama in 08. Yeah. I was one of the loudest voices saying, look, man, <laughs> this ain't my brand of hope. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and 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 the critiques that came of Obama later and the critiques that come of Biden are, are, are appropriate. I, I tell people to make the, the decision that's best for them, but make an informed one and never feel beholden to a party. That's sort of how I think about it. Yeah. But I can't wait to see who Cornell picks. Yeah, we'll find out Wednesday all together <laughs> on this program Wednesday. Right. So, so, uh, so yeah. it ain't you either then. Say what? So it ain't you either. Oh, huh? definitely not me. <laughs> that, <laughs> let, let me dispel those rumors right now. Let me dispel those rumors <laughs> right now. I think we can assume that it's not Tavis Smiley. I can tell you that. And it's not Mark Lamont Hill. I mean, although this could be a Jedi mind trick that Mark is faking me out by coming on today. He's back in his studio on Wednesday. I, I would die if he walked in here Wednesday. I said, Negro, exactly. you, you could you could have told me this 48 hours ago? You could have told me 48 hours ago? Uh, anyway. It's a gag order. It's a gag, a gag order. <laughs> so I assume it's not Mark Lamont Hill. I can assure you it is not Tab Smiley. But we will find out who the running mate is. As you know, uh, Bobby Kennedy, RFK Jr., um, announced his pick a few days ago. What, what, what did you make of that pick? It was clear to me, uh, with all due respect to Mr. Kennedy, he was going for the money. It takes money to get on these ballots, uh, and yep. he, he signed on a billionaire. So it's pretty, it's pretty clear what his motives were, but that's my read. What's your read? It, 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 both, both things are correct. On the one hand, you know, you get a billionaire, it signifies that, you, that you, you're trying to make a, a, a splash. Yeah. You want to pay for the ads. You want to be out there in the world. Uh, you want to have some length and some and some and some and some strong legs for a long campaign run. Yeah. People like Ross Perot were able to do it uh, because they had the money to do it. People like Bloomberg could have done it, but they were smart enough to know how to, to keep their money by not running too long. Yeah. And and but but it's a strategic thing. The thing though to me is when you have billionaires running for office, I can't see you as a a, a, a critical, radical, or even progressive left wing voice. And you know, a lot of people were out here, you know, praising Kennedy for telling the truth as it is. But when I when I see billionaire running mates, when I see uh, supporting the military industrial complex, particularly in in, in Israel, uh, what's going on in Gaza right now, there's yeah. so many things that he says that are troublesome to me. I, like you can you can if you out there thinking about voting for him, to me, that's just to be opposite. That's just to be contrarian. Because yeah. if you if you want a corporate, <laughs> you can you can you must vote for Biden and at least keep Trump out. Yeah. If you're gonna vote for Robert Robert Kennedy, no, I, at least with Cornell, what? yeah. Go ahead, no, no, no. I didn't even cut you. I, I hear your point. I was about I was about to say um, when we come forward, um, Mark has already set this up set this up nicely for me. There are a number of things he's already said that I want to interrogate, as is always the case with Mark Lamont Hill. Uh, first, he said he voted for Biden in 2020 because he felt that he had no choice. Well, that's the argument this year about why Cornell West and Bobby Kennedy shouldn't be running. That we really ain't got a choice. These guys are running at the wrong time. People feel they have no choice but to vote for Biden. And Cornell and Bobby Kennedy may mess things up. We'll talk about that. Mark talked earlier about 
voting out of his fear more than his aspirations. We'll talk about that. We've now reached the six-month mark with this conflict in the Middle East, uh, still at an impasse, Israel and Hamas. Mark mentioned that. We'll interrogate that. Uh, Mark said earlier that uh, he didn't vote for Obama the second time around. That wasn't his brand of hope. He got some pushback about that. You know I got pushback in the Obama era. We'll unpack that. And I can assure you of this. Uh, Cornell West running mate uh, announced on this program Wednesday will not be Mark Lamont. Although Mark did not officially deny that. When we come forward, I'm going to ask him. I'm just asking point blank. Are you the running mate? I denied it. Mark Lamont Hill did not deny it. But I can assure you this. His running mate will not be a billionaire. <laughs> You're listening to Tavis Smiley. You're listening to Tavis Smiley. Tavis Smiley. Rank number 45 on the heavy 100 list of the 100 most important radio talk show hosts in America. Hey, y'all. Mona Swain here from Target's new YouTube series, My Card is Full, where we feature black founders and creators highlighting their connection to our community. As an actor and content creator, I love using my voice to inspire young black women who look like me. When it comes to feeding my shine, seeing myself reflected in black-owned and founded products at Target brings me joy. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Learn more at Target.com slash Black Beyond Measure. Cookie wants to be a professional wrestler. I'm Cookie Serratos and I'm 11 years old. She also wants to win all the medals. That's why Cookie and her family make every day count, squeezing out her best with Go Go Squeeze. Okay, Cookie, let's break for a Go Go Squeeze. Go Go Squeeze fruit on the go pouches are a nutritious snack made from 100% fruit with no sugar added. Go Cookie! Because when you nurture your kids, you squeeze out the best in them. Squeeze out the best with Go Go Squeeze. Not a low calorie food. Products range from 11 to 13 grams of sugar and 60 to 70 calories per serving. We asked seniors how to prevent Medicare scams. My best advice, if you get a phone call, do not talk to the person. These people are well-trained. Don't talk to them. They don't know me. They're just trying to scam me. Don't be fooled. Hang up. Just hang up. Never give out your Medicare number. They're going to get your number to put in a false claim. If I get a call from someone, I don't pick up the phone. And should I pick up the phone and they ask for information, then I hang up. How do you detect Medicare fraud? Just like I check my credit card statements, I check my Medicare statements monthly. Scammers can get a hold of your number, order medical devices through your account, and you're not even going to know about it if you don't look at your statement. Check your statement every month. If you get your statement and you see something that you know you did not have done, you report it. Call your senior Medicare patrol. To report Medicare fraud, call the Senior Medicare Patrol at 855-613-7080. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawon'twait.com. Made fresh daily in the Mert Park, Los Angeles, California. You're listening to Tavis Smiley. Tavis Smiley and Mark Lamont Hill just getting started in this hour talking all things uh, politics and more, as is often the case. Uh, usually the case Well, when Mark Lamont Hill joins us, and I'm humbled once again to hear his voice uh, on these airwaves. So, Mark, you said a few things I want to uh, give you a chance to unpack. Let me go back first to, to 2020 when you said you voted for Joe Biden in that moment because you felt you had no choice. Everybody's using the same word, the same line in 2024 that Donald Trump represents an existential threat to our democracy. It's, it's, that, it's, it's almost like, like that's a Democratic 
uh, party talking point because everybody's using that same phrase. He is an existential threat to our democracy, although the phrase happens to be true. That said, for those who say, Mark, we ain't got no choice this time, that Cornell West and Bobby Kennedy and Jill Stein, anybody else out there running um, who we cast our votes for is really a wasted vote, and it may usher Donald Trump back into the Oval Office. So you didn't have a choice in 2020. Again, folk are making that same argument in 2024. I don't think it's a bad argument, um, but I do separate that argument from the wasted vote argument. There's no such thing as a wasted vote. Mm-hmm. Um, the Democrats do not um, own us, and they don't own our vote. Exactly. And the logic that they do, even the subtle logic of where else we're going to go, um, is what allows them to be so wildly indifferent, if not oppositional, to our politics and our needs. They know we're going to vote. And if we are a captured electorate, um, then they'll never move to our needs. They're going to move toward the needs of other people. And I refuse to allow independent voters, progressive voters, et cetera, to be the scapegoats or to be vote-shamed for the failures of the Democratic Party to meet the needs of its base. For example, Joe Biden right now is losing votes every single day. I have a college student as a daughter who is like, Dad, I I, I don't want Trump to be in office, but I'm standing here, and I, I every time I see what's happening in Gaza, it's hard, and, and, Trump, and, and, and Biden refuses to stop it. I can't in good conscience vote for him. Now, I, she's not going to have some conversations, mm-hmm. but there's a, there's millions of voters out there who feel that way. And Biden could do the right thing. Just And that's just one example. Biden could do the right thing and keep those votes. But he's the one not willing to make the move. He's the one not willing to address policing properly. He's the one who's not willing to address reparations. He's the one who's not willing to address our issues. And then when he doesn't address our issues, we don't vote for him. They go, see, it's your fault Donald Trump is there. No, it's Biden's fault. Mm-hmm. It's the Democrats' fault. Mm-hmm. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not blaming other people for making different choices. Now, for me, I, I'm making a, a pragmatic calculation here and saying that I, I still think the value of having uh, a Supreme Court. I'm worried about who I'm, Trump is an outlier. Tavis, you're right. Every every year that we've been running, every year we've been alive, the Democrats say the sky's falling if you don't vote for us. <laughs> the, the, wor- the worst. The, the devil himself is going to be president. They've yeah. been telling us that. Every time, but Trump is a different animal. That's mm-hmm. all I can say. Mm-hmm. No, that 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 he that he is. Um, but I, I love your 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 phraseology of vote shaming. Uh, I've said it many times on this program. I I won't let people come on this program and use the word spoiler. You can say anything, but right. I, you can't use the word spoiler because when the Democrats lose to the Republicans, they never call the Republicans spoilers. Well, they spoiled it for you. They won. You lost. Um, it's, right. it's only it's only it's only, it's only uh, independent candidates who we who we call spoilers. And yet, I hear your point about pragmatism. Um, but this notion of vote shaming just concerns me because at the end of the day, again, as I said repeatedly, by the logic we hear every four years, certainly this year, there will never be a good time for a third party candidate. Uh, and, right. and, and I don't like that argument. And I've said before, uh, with all due respect to my friend Cornel West uh, and, and Bobby Kennedy, who I know, and Jill Stein, who I know. Um, the Green Party is a little bit different. You've been you voted for them for a lot of years. What I what I don't believe you can do is to jump in at the top level, at the top tier. You can't jump in and say I'm running for president without building a third party. You have to build it. And you don't build from the top down. You build a skyscraper from the bottom up. And so I just think that every four years when we have this conversation about independent candidates and nobody has spent the prior four years building a platform, building a party, I don't think you're ever going to be ultimately successful if you're jumping in every four years quixotically at the presidential level race. Does that make sense to you? It makes complete sense, and that's the tension that I currently have with the Green Party, who, again, these are my comrades, these are my friends, but I've said that to them repeatedly. We show up every four years, and we look like spoilers because we, we could have won the Philly mayoral race. Mm-hmm. We could be. We could have won the New York mayoral race. We could be in city councils around the country. We could be winning statewide elections. And the same way Republicans built their power base over the last 40 years by winning statewide elections, taking over houses, you know, that's how you build a base. That's what we should be doing. And then mm-hmm. when people see Green Party, they won't think – Oh, that's just them fools that's trying to, you know, they just want to get some attention every four years. And instead, they'll see us as an actual pol- political movement. I was asked to run, I won't say which, which, which time, but I was asked to run for vice president uh, of Green Party on someone's ticket uh, 
And I said no for a few reasons. One, you know, I, I you know, I ain't got enough money to be <laughs> taking <up> off work. <laughs> in our line of work, you can't just not work. You yeah. know what I mean, I can't, I can't be in the media and run for president. Yeah. So I can't afford it for this run. But more importantly, like, I, I need to be, I need the people to see me and know that I did everything I could to build on other levels. I need people to know that I'm here for a long term project. That's not my ministry. Mm. You know what I mean? But, but I think we should all, in the Green Party at least, I'm only gonna speak for my party. We should all be thinking like that. Look, if you want to put forward a candidate in, in, in 24, fine. You know what I mean? That's yeah. that, you know. But but I, I didn't have any hesitation not voting uh, in 20 in 2020 for Green Party because I didn't feel like we I didn't feel like they'd earn my vote either. Mm-hmm. No, that's fair. That's fair. Um, let me circle back uh, to two other questions quickly about Cornell West since we're talking. Uh, you're talking up in, in in this moment at least uh, about your independent voting. Um, one, I, I know you've been real slick about this. You did not expressly deny that you are not the running mate. You want to do that now, or you want to just? I, 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 I did not do that. You're right. That's a good observation. This is why you are an excellent journalist. This is why you are a brilliant mind. Yeah. I did not do that. That yeah. is correct. Are, are you going to do? Are you going to do that right now? <laughs> I, I, I think I want people to see what happens. This is how, this is how the politician. I'm gonna be like a politician today. Okay. I, I think we should just let the process way out. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just serve my country in any way possible. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's a non-answer. We will see uh, who shows up in this studio Wednesday. But I tell you, if this, if this Negro walks in Wednesday, I'm gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we will see. Uh, but 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 to, but but to that point, one final thing about Dr. West. We'll move on since he's making his announcement here on Wednesday. Uh, who his running mate is going to be? In case you just tuned in, I said that earlier. Um, what kind of person? We we saw who Bobby Kennedy picked. We know who Joe Biden's running with. Trump has yet to announce his running mate. Um, not that it matters or that we care, but he hasn't announced it as yet. Um, right, right. Or, that it, or that it makes a difference for that matter. But what kind of person in this moment do you think Cornell West should pick? I'm thinking an African-American male professor who has a YouTube channel. No, no, um, <laughs> let me stop messing with y'all. I ain't going to be nobody running mate. I, I, I think I, I, I'd like to see a woman. Uh, I would be surprised. I don't want to say Cornella, but I would be surprised if he didn't choose a woman. I'd be I'd be shocked okay. if he didn't choose a woman. Okay. First of all, okay. I I, th- I think we need to see uh, some some gender balance on these uh, on these tickets. But I also think more importantly than just the identity politics of it, I think he's going, you're going to see somebody who probably has an activist background, mm-hmm. but maybe someone who and I, I'd, I'd be interested to see if you get somebody who has an activist background and a grassroots background, but also maybe has some government experience like, for example if you picked a nina turner type mm-hmm. i could live with that. That, that that's the kind of person i'm not saying it's gonna be her i have no idea mm-hmm. um but i but I, that's the kind of person i would like to see mm-hmm. now he may he may choose a white person mm-hmm. right you know because there's some grassroots or leftist white people that still feel more comfortable when there's white people on the <laughs> yeah. when there's white people on, on, on the diet so yeah. so i wouldn't shock me but 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 i'd like to see a woman and i'd like to see someone with some grassroots and some government experience yep so my thought about this is simply this um at 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 this point, <clears throat> at this point in the process and the way the game is played out, we see that Bobby Kennedy chose somebody. He went for the money. We discussed that earlier because it takes money to to get on these ballots in these states. So either Dr. West has to choose somebody similarly who has a lot of money. I can't see that happening just given his critique of you know corporatism in this country. Um, but there are those who do have money who happen to be uh, more uh, left leaning in their politics. So it's got to be somebody, to my mind who has some money, like Bobby Kennedy's choice, or somebody who is uniquely connected. You keep using the phrase grassroots. I wouldn't argue that. But it's got to be somebody who has access to a lot of people, somebody that can help him generate some energy, maybe even amongst young people. Amongst young people. But it's, but it's got to be one or the other, Mark. Either, you, either they got to bring a bunch yeah. of money or they got to bring some connections. Does that make sense? I, I, th- I think that makes sense. And now the question is, who energizes young people that's either going to leave the Democratic Party or is already in the grassroots? Right. And and those answers for me are usually celebrities. And I just mm. don't know if you want an all celebrity ticket because mm. I think that. So so you know, I, I wish that there were a a you know how like back in the day, like Ron Paul and then Rand Paul came along, and mm-hmm. and, and Rand was more mainstream, but people loved the leftists, the righties loved Ron Ron Paul. He was if he had ever walked out of the, the Republican Party and said, "I'm going to run third party for president." He'd have a lot of energy because he spoke to certain people's kind of libertarian impulses. Like Dennis Kucinich was kind of that for us back back in the, in the arts. Um, there, there are people like that. I just don't know if any of them are are, are young enough and compelling. Mm-hmm. And a Bernie would be the kind of person, right, mm-hmm. who young people seem to worship. But uh, you know, I, I don't know if there is one of those around anymore. So I 
Nina Turner, as I'm saying it out loud, might not be no, the best pick. And again, yeah. I don't know nothing. Yeah. No, I like. I hadn't even thought about Nina Turner. I've been. I've been discussing this with myself for the last couple of days and I hadn't even thought about Nina Turner, but that's a great, that's a great suggestion. She'd be, if, if I were Cornell West, she'd be on my short list. Um, and so I, I, I like that idea. I like that idea. Well, anyway, we'll find out. We'll find out Wednesday uh, in the first hour of this program, Dr. West will join us um, with his uh, running mate uh, and we'll all find out um, uh, together at that, at that time. Uh, let me, I'm watching my clock here for the next few minutes. I want to look back and then we'll spend the rest of this hour, the last half hour uh, looking forward. And by looking forward, I'm talking about the fact that we've now arrived at the six month mark uh, of this war between Israel and Hamas. Uh, the impasse is yet in place. Never mind the ceasefire vote by the UN. Um, things continue to escalate. We'll get, get Mark's take on that and a few other things. Um, but I, what I want to go back to right quick, though, as I said before I go forward, is this idea uh, that you shared earlier, not idea, um, your, 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 your story that you shared earlier about not voting for Obama the second time around because what he was doing did not represent your brand of hope. Uh, you realize that even today, that's still heresy. It's heresy to say you did not vote for Barack Obama uh, in his second campaign. Uh, obviously, we both know, you know. I didn't vote the first one either. Now, to be clear, I didn't vote the first one either. Okay, so that that but you, but you realize that's 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 heresy uh, in in Black America. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Ooh, they girl still mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, I, when I, when I, I ran for him, I I I, I, I voted for. Uh, 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 Cynthia McKinney and right. and Rosa Clemente in 2008 mm -hmm. for the Green Party, mm -hmm. um, and I remember people were outraged. You know, some people were outraged just that I didn't vote for Hillary. Then they said, "You yeah, didn't Obama look like the heir apparent? Okay, we got to vote for him." I said, "No," and I wrote a piece actually in the Root, and that's when the Root first came out. That's when Skip Gates was still like overseeing it directly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I wrote a piece called "Not My Brand," called, called "Not My Brand of Hope" in in 2008. Um, and people were furious. The, the, the managerial class, the bourgeois class, all the people that be in them circles, they was mad um, because they were so excited to have a black, a black potential black president. Sure. Um, I just couldn't do it, man. I, I, I saw his, his vision of economic policies. I saw his, his foreign policy. I said, this looks just like Clinton, mm -hmm. who we had all stood up on the left the so-called left, and raged against. We all said, oh, Clinton is a centrist. Clinton is doing this. Clinton is doing that. And then when we had an opportunity to, you know, to, to have a Democrat back in office, mm -hmm. they brought back another Clinton, you know, mm -hmm. with some differences in certain ways, some better, some worse. But fundamentally, this wasn't a radical alternative. And that's where I, that's what I wanted. I thought this was an opportunity yeah. to reimagine what was possible. Yeah. So what's funny about it, I'm laughing inside, uh, but not outside. <laughs> well, now I'm laughing outside. Um, <laughs> I, I, I caught more hell than anybody I know during that eight year period. For sure. And, and I and I did vote for Obama twice. Mark Lamont Hill says he didn't. And y'all <laughs> did, didn't go after him when he came after me uh, for that eight year period. But but, here, but here's the point. I voted for Obama twice. And I did it the first time. But I, again, for me, the alternative of, of Romney at one point and McCain at the other point didn't really make sense to me. Uh, and I could have considered the Green Party as you did. But I voted for him for one simple reason, not because I thought he was the best candidate per se, but because I hoped that his being elected would unleash progressive possibilities. Yeah. So as my, as, yeah. as my friend Mike Dyson would say, he was on this program a couple of days ago, Dyson would say, um, I'm, 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 there's a difference between Willie Mays and Jackie Robinson, right? There's a difference between the two. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, and so uh, his thing was that you got to vote for one sometimes to get to what you really want. And so my view is, and was that maybe voting for him will unleash progressive possibilities, but you and I both agree on this in the aftermath. It really didn't. It did not it unleash didn't. progressive possibilities. He did not have black coattails. Jesse Jackson had more coattails in 84 and 88 than, the Barack, than Barack Obama yep. had in 2008 or 2012. He just had no black coattails. You can't show me a bunch of black folks who got elected across the country, as I could show you in 84 and 88, people who got elected because of Jesse's run. Obama didn't have that in either of his campaigns, so I hoped it would release uh, progressive possibilities. It did not. Let's talk about that part before we move forward. When we come forward on Tavis Smiley with Mark Lamont Hill. Seeking the truth. Seeking the truth. Speaking, Speaking the, truth. the truth. This, this is the Tavis Smiley, Smiley Show. Paid for by government.com. Did you know the United States Mint has issued a new Morgan silver dollar coin in proof condition for the first time? Not only that, they are also minted in 99.9% .9 pure silver for the first time ever in history. 
Coin experts are calling this an amazing opportunity for anyone that knows the enduring popularity of Morgans. But you must hurry. Only 400,000 of these legal tender silver dollars were issued. These first ever Morgan silver dollars are brand new with stunning mirror-like finish, minted by the iconic San Francisco Mint. Call now and you're guaranteed a new first ever 99.9% pure silver proof Morgan dollar. To learn more, call 1-800-973-9717. If you order now, you will receive a free coin collector bonus pack a $25 value free with every order call 1-800-973-9717 now to secure your new morgan silver dollars before they are gone that's 1-800-973-9717 I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. Experts are out with an important reminder today that taking pictures of a partial eclipse with your phone could damage your eyes and your camera. Today's upcoming eclipse will be total for a narrow strip across a dozen or so states, but in areas where the eclipse is partial, extra precautions should be taken before taking pictures. In Illinois, family, friends, residents across the state and politicians far and wide are mourning the loss of Cook County Clerk Karen Yarborough. Word from Yarborough's family is that she has passed away after she was hospitalized last week with an undisclosed medical condition. Yarborough was the first black person and woman elected to the Cook County Clerk's Office. The 73-year-old was described as a pioneer and trailblazer. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. For victims of drunk and drug driving, our grief is unique, but you are not alone. You always have a place at MAD. Call our 24-hour victim helpline at 877-MAD-HELP or visit mad.org. This, this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The Lakers lost at home to Minnesota. They played without LeBron. He was at home with the flu. The Lakers also played without Anthony Davis after the first quarter. AD suffered an eye injury. 30 points for Rui Hachimura in the loss. The Clippers overcame a 26-point deficit in the third quarter to beat Cleveland. The win was number 50 for the Clippers, their first 50-win season since 2017. Paul George scored 23 of his 39 points in the fourth quarter to spark the comeback. Congrats to South Carolina women's basketball coach Dawn Staley. South Carolina beat Iowa to win the NCAA National Championship and cap an undefeated season at 38-0. Third national title for Staley at South Carolina. Tiger Woods is planning to play in the Masters this week. Barring any physical setbacks, the 48-year-old Woods will tee off in the first round on Thursday. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. Climate justice, climate equity, climate resilience. By any other name, we demand, demand environmental justice in 2024 and beyond. We're KBLA Talk 1580, and we don't black down. We've got a lot to talk about. Hi, I'm Ray Richardson, your sports connection here at KBLA Talk 1580. Join me and my co-host Neil Scarborough every Saturday night at 7 for Out of Bounds, the show that brings some flavor to the world of sports for 60 minutes. We take you beyond the scores and press conferences. We give you our point of view, the way black folks see what's going down. You can join the conversation and give us your analysis at 1-800-920-1580. Out of Bounds, every Saturday night at 7 on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. black. You like your style, though. I feel occasional burning and stabbing in my hands as I age. I sometimes feel numbness and tingling in my feet as I get older. It's starting to get in the way of doing what I love. At Nervive, we hear you and we can help. Nervive's clinically studied dose of alpha lipoic acid reduces occasional nerve discomfort in as little as seven days with continued daily use. Now that I know, I'm taking control. Try Nervive Nerve Relief and say yes to healthy nerves. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Sometimes I struggle to get to sleep. My body stopped for the day, but my mind is still running. So I take ZQuil. ZQuil, the world's number one sleep aid brand, has a range of non habit forming products to fit you and your family's needs. Invest in a great night's sleep for the best you tomorrow. I'm awake and ready to take on anything. Better days start 
with ZQuill Nights. Explore our products at ZQuill.com. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. Did you know that feeling sluggish or weighed down could be a sign that your digestive system isn't working at its best? Taking Metamucil every day can help. Metamucil fiber powders help promote your daily digestive health using a plant-based fiber called psyllium. The gelling action of this special fiber traps and removes waste so you can feel lighter and more energetic. Metamucil, promoting digestive health for a better you. Learn more at metamucil.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I spray and scrub, but the soap scum in my bathtub is still there. I spray and scrub, but the burnt sauce on my stovetop sticks around. Sprays can leave grime behind, but new Mr. Clean Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser combines the scrubbing power of an eraser with the cleaning power of Dawn to melt away tough messes on contact. Just wet, squeeze, and erase. Stop spraying, start erasing, and clean with more magic than ever with new Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. Let's get back to more of this rich dialogue with Tavis Smiley. Tavis Smiley and Mark Lamont here. Mark, there's a whole lot of stuff coming at me. I've got my own questions I, I teed up a moment ago that I want to ask you. Uh, I'm seeing all kind of responses from listeners of things they want me to ask you. Uh, I see breaking news right about now, and I don't mean the solar eclipse either. Uh, there is breaking news. Donald Trump has indicated that he will sue the judge overseeing his Manhattan criminal case in a last-ditch attempt to delay prosecution. Reading now from the New York Times, Mr. Trump's unorthodox move, essentially uh, an appeal in the form of a lawsuit, is unlikely to succeed, particularly so close to trial. But Donald Trump announcing he is going to sue the judge in this Manhattan case brought by the <laughs> brother D.A. Alvin Bragg to stop this thing or to slow it down just a little bit longer. So run out this clock, Mark Lamont here. That's what he tried to do, man. The, the man is resourceful, and he's getting desperate. I, mean, I, I don't, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, I, I think his, his, he will, he will have exhausted all of his legal options. But here's the thing, you know, he, he's, he's going to be found guilty. But more importantly, more interestingly to me, I don't think it matters to almost any voters who are considering voting for him. Yeah, mm, that part, that part. No, nope, I think you're That's right. The scary part. No, nope, that you're right. I've said that before on this program. What does all this really matter ultimately? If they find him guilty on a couple of different things and a couple of different trials and it doesn't uh, prevent him from running for president and it doesn't really matter to his voters. I, I don't know what the end game ultimately is. Uh, but anyway, there's your breaking news that Donald Trump is going to sue the judge in uh, New York uh, to slow down, um, or stop, or try to avert this Manhattan trial. I argue with Mark and all the experts I'm reading right quickly who are opining, suggest the same thing, that this close to trial is probably not going to work. Uh, but uh, he is resourceful, to quote Mark Lamont Hill. Uh, and he's creative. He's resourceful and creative. Uh, and so um, uh, we will see what happens with this lawsuit in the days ahead. But there's, there's your breaking news. Before I get to the Obama question that I posed uh, before the break about um, progressive possibilities, uh, and namely why I voted for him for, for those two terms, a couple things from, from, uh, from listeners, Mark, <clears throat> excuse me, would Mark Tavis have voted differently over the years if he was voting in a swing state? That's the first of two questions I want to pose to you right quick, Mark. I'm on you. Well, I vote in Pennsylvania. That is a swing state. So, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think Hillary lost my 10 votes here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I might have literally been a deciding vote, me yeah. and my family. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So, no. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there's that answer. There's that answer. And speaking of swing states, we are told, Mark Lamont, you read the same stuff I'm reading. We are told by the by the political experts, by the pundits, uh, by the poll watchers uh, who cover these campaigns, that this election really will ultimately come down to, we are told, about three million voters in six or seven swing states so I, as i keep yeah. joking maybe all of our votes are wasted minus those three million people in those six or seven states how do you read that notion well, well two things one i i think it's going to be tight and and i think again this is why biden ignoring michigan voters those arabs and dearborn that you think don't matter that much because there's only a few hundred thousand votes they may be the difference between winning Michigan and losing Michigan, which might be the difference between winning the presidency and losing the presidency. Oh, yeah. So the same way he he stand up with the union lines and and you know and, and, and being lunch pail Joe when it's time to go to Virginia and Ohio, you might you you, you know what I mean? You, you might have to be Abdul Yahya or something when you when you go up to <laughs> to, to Michigan. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? If you if you want to win this thing, um, I I think um, 
there's, there's a frustration, I think, that people have that it always comes down to these places. But that's, again, why I think it's important to vote your conscience. I do think we can be strategic, though. One of the things I told people uh, when I did vote for uh, Jill Stein in 2016 was let's vote trade. You know, if you're if you're in California, you safe. You can vote for anybody you want, and the outcome going to be the same. If I'm in mm-hmm. Texas, I can vote whoever I want. Outcome going to be the same. But maybe you know. But but so what you do is you 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 trade your vote with some, with with a comrade who's in a state where they can't afford mm-hmm. to do that. And, and 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 you know, like Pennsylvania, et cetera. That way, that way, the Green Party or whoever still gets. Uh, it's based because the truth is we know the Green Party is not going to win the presidency. But what we can do is get enough. If we get a slice of the vote, then we get a slice of the federal funding, which then allows us to to, yeah. to mount a campaign in the future. You can do that if you, if, if you secure your votes in safe states. So there's ways to still get your 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 vote uh, heard and your voice felt without. Yeah. Uh, compromising a swing state if that's something you care about. Speaking of Green Party, uh, another quick question here. We'll move forward. Um, uh, what does it mean for the Green Party, Mark, if enough people in safe states get their candidate five percent in terms of campaign financing and building a movement? That's and that's exactly that's exactly where I'm going with. That's exactly my point. We need the five percent because until you get the five percent. You can't compete with the big dogs, right? Mm-hmm. But you can't, you know, and, and, and if you can't compete with the big dogs, then people say, well, why are you voting? So it becomes like a cycle. So that's why, again, I think it's important for us to build the Green Party. But, again, let's build it slow. Let's build it local. Let's build it regional. But also, even when we do the national elections, we should really commit to vote trading or to targeting states that we can't lose no matter, you know what I mean? Like 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 like, like Omar and Warren said, even if I miss, I can't miss, right? Yeah. Like, let, let's organize in California. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Let's get all the Democrats in Texas. You know, that, that's how I would be thinking about it if mm-hmm. I were in charge, but I'm not. Yep, fair enough. Um, to the point that we were discussing earlier about why I voted for Obama those two terms and why you did not, uh, you stated your case, and my case simply is I voted for him uh, uh, not because I thought he was right on all the issues, but because I hoped at least that his election, his ascent, would open up progressive possibilities. It did not do that to my mind. How do you read it? The same way. The same way. Um, I, I I hoped that in 2012 he would have proven me wrong and given me enough ammunition to vote for him in 12, and I didn't see it. And I und- and, and, and you're right. I, mean, I, I don't think you did the wrong thing because, I mean, again, if you made a tactical decision as well, that, look, even – even with him as a milk toast liberal, he's still better than McCain. Mm-hmm. He's still better than Romney. Mm-hmm. That ain't a bad argument. What I disagree with is the people who say, well, you know, he couldn't do nothing the first time because he's just getting in there. And then the next time, he'll get... I'll tell you something. I, as a professor, there are professors who don't have tenure, who are cowardly. They won't speak up on any issues. And then the, and everybody says, but when I get tenure, I'm going to be a different person. And I, I, I've been a professor now for, I, I, the time be moving, man. I've been a professor now for 19 years mm-hmm. since I got my Ph.D., and in 19 years I've been a professor, every single person that was cowardly before they got tenure, after they got the tenure, the next thing was, well, but I want to get promoted to full professor. <laughs> then it was, well, I, but, but then I need an endowed chair. And, you know, and if I speak out now, then I won't be department chair. And yeah. there's always a reason to be a punk. Yeah. You know? Yeah. To be a coward. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, the president's always got a reason why they can't. Well, if I do that, then I'll lose the Congress. Oh, if I do that, then the next, you know, there's always a reason. You, you are who you are when you showed up. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so I don't and that doesn't mean you can't be strategic and tactical and you can't wait and be patient. I get all of that. I'm not I'm not naive, but I saw nothing about Obama that would make me think that he was going to in the fourth quarter do anything different than he was going to do in the first quarter. Yeah. You know, um, and that's unfortunate. I mean, I'm going to give you one example that, that and I'll tell you it frustrated me. I, I've been working on the release of political prisoners for a very long time. They're trying to get old Panthers out, people who got way too mm-hmm. long a sentence. I went to we, we did it on the federal level to the White House, and we also did it at the gubernatorial level in New York with the brother. He was blind. Um, who, who, da- who David the, David uh, Patterson. David Patterson. David Patterson. David Patterson. Yeah. I remember going to Patterson the same way and said, "Look, you only going to be governor for six months. There are some black people here who are in prison who got railroaded as Black Panthers. Who you could get out right now. You can even delay their release to two or three years from now when you're not governor no more." And, I, and and his answer was, no, it'll ruin my political career. I'm like, bro, you are a black man governor who got appointed here. You know what I mean? In New York, you ain't got no political future except to run in Harlem, maybe for Adam Clayton, you know, for the Adam Clayton Powell seat, for mm-hmm. Charlie Rangel seat. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, I said, look, I said, there's no way Harlem is going to punish you for letting a bunch of Negroes out of jail. Mm-hmm. You'll be fine. <laughs> but he, even in that situation... 
<laughs> even in that situation, they're so beholden to the status quo and to the power structure. Even he ain't had nothing to lose, mm. but he still wouldn't do it. Mm. They just won't do it. They just won't act right. You know, mm. if, if, when you're in that maze, it's hard. No, it um it takes a lot to be courageous uh, politically. Um, and yes. you're right about the fact that when people get in they keep moving the post right that's my problem they keep moving the post well this and well mm -hmm. this and well this okay i'm not trying to hear that uh our guest is mark lamont here when we come forward we'll talk about the fact that we have now arrived at the six month mark uh this uh of this conflict this war between israel and hamas we'll get his take on that and a few other things before i lose him at the top of the hour a few more minutes left here with mark lamont hill on tavis smiley hope agency dignity this is Tavis Smiley. Can you dig it? Come on! What is dedication? My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that my kids wouldn't have a father. And I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. I definitely had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Joey from Vermont. A farmer trying to get through the winter. Adriana from South Carolina. A single mother living paycheck to paycheck. Liam from Ohio. An injured father struggling to provide for his family. Hi, I'm Shanola Hampton. And I support the Feeding America network of food banks because they help provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. The thing no one tells you about periods is that your flow changes every day and so should your tampon size. Tampax has five absorbencies to match your changing flow. If it hurts to remove, go down a size. If it leaks, go up a size. Only Tampax has a leak guard braid to help give you up to 100% leak and odor-free protection. All day comfort and protection for under $5 a month. Based on average U.S. consumer usage at manufacturer's suggested price, however, pricing is at the sole discretion of the retailer. Excludes eight count. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes we find what we're looking for. Sometimes we're rolling easy and free. Sometimes one and one makes three. So much to love along this ride. That's why Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. If you love to travel, Capital One has a rewards credit card that's perfect for you. With Venture X, earn unlimited double miles on everything you buy and turn everyday purchases into extraordinary trips. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges where you just check in and chill out. Open up a world of possibilities with Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Lounge access is subject to change. See CapitalOne.com for details. Psst. Hey, I have a secret. Uh-huh. I use secret whole body deodorant because more than just my armpits stink. Uh-huh. Can I use it where my bra rubs under my... Oh, <laughs> yeah. And what about down there? You know, my... Totally. Four out of five gynecologists would recommend it. So I tried it, and now I get 72 hours of freshness. freshness. From my pits to my... Ooh, I love that it's a spray. Me too. And it comes in sticks and creams, too. Go get your secret whole body deodorant. Sounds, Sounds different. different, huh? This, this is Tavis Smiley. I'm looking, I'm looking at all these messages, Mark Lamont Hill, uh, that are saying in a variety of ways, I'm in lockstep with Dr. Hill. <laughs> I'm in lockstep with Dr. Hill. So you got... You got folk who uh, understand your point of view and are in, in agreement with you. Uh, let's see if they're with agree in agreement with you on this point, <laughs> and that is, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you, now you know where I'm going, right? Let's see if they agree okay. with this. Let's see if they <laughs> you can get with that, but can you get with this? Uh, and, and the, this is the war between Israel and Hamas. No laughing matter here. Uh, we've now uh, reached the six month mark, and this conflict is still at an impasse. Never mind. Uh, this ceasefire vote, which was cheered in the U.N., your thoughts about this war six months in, unabated? This is one of the cruelest things I've ever seen. You know, again, there are other things happening that deserve our attention. And the great thing is that people like you, Tavis, cover 
Haiti, you talk about Congo, you talk about Sudan. You know, I, I never want to isolate Israel, Palestine as a single issue because it speaks to a bigger problem of imperial power uh, and what happens when the West dominates. Um, but what we're seeing right now in Gaza is, is, is one of the cruelest things I have ever seen. As of last night, I think it's 33,000, uh, over 33,000 people have been killed, not counting the 8,000 who haven't been identified, but they're under the rubble. So we're looking at over 40,000 people dead, 78,000 wounded, 112 wells destroyed, which is part of the dehydration problem. Every university destroyed 70 percent of the uh, of the overall physical environment of the of the construction. The buildings in Gaza have been destroyed. 1.7 million out of 2.2 million people are unhoused at this point. Uh, One percent of all children in Gaza have been murdered, have been killed. Mm. Um, and I could give you 15 other stats like that that are just as harrowing. And the point at the end of this is it could stop tomorrow. Uh, what, the United States could stop this tomorrow. I'm not blaming the U.S. for Israel's actions per se, mm -hmm. but the U.S. could stop this tomorrow. Joe Biden could stop this tomorrow. And all Joe Biden wants to do is look like he's tough on this issue by doing press leaks of the, the president is cursing Netanyahu out behind his back, and the, the Biden is pissed off at, at Netanyahu, but they're still sending the money. We're about to send him probably $14 billion more. There was a ceasefire call at the U.N. two weeks ago, three weeks ago, that was vetoed by the United States because as a, as a permanent member, we can veto any, anything. So um, basically, the U.S. is enabling Israel's behavior, and Israel is making it very clear that this isn't about a war on Hamas. This is a war on the Palestinian people. This is a genocide. This is ethnic cleansing. And this is indefensible and disgusting. Our remaining moments with Mark Lamont here. Got to get him to come out of his shell. Stop being so passive and tell us what he really thinks. You're listening to Tavis Smiley. What's your quarrel with the world? You're listening to Tavis Smiley. If you're like me, 60 and retired, making ends meet, especially here at the supermarket and drugstore is tough. I'm so blessed to have found BenefitsCheckup.org. It's a free and confidential website from the National Council on Aging that connected me to $1,200 a year in programs that help pay for food, medicine, utilities, and more. Maybe it can help you. BenefitsCheckup.org. My daughter was diagnosed with a rare malignant rhabnoid tumor on the spine. They sent us straight to St. Jude. My hope was gone. But when you get there, everyone's like, hey, we're not going to give up. And when you see other people not giving up on your child, that makes all the difference in the world. When I found out I didn't have to pay, I was just grateful. They saved my baby's life. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 reminding you that we keep us safe. Pro Football Hall of Famer and urban peace pioneer Jim Brown believed in just that. So he founded the Amera I Can Foundation for Social Change in 1988, focusing on at-risk and high-risk youth in underserved schools and juvenile detention facilities, as well as adult incarceration and reentry initiatives. The core of the Amera I Can program is its 15-chapter life skills curriculum. Mastery of these skills allows individuals to meet their academic potential, conform their behavior to acceptable societal standards, and improve the quality of their lives by equipping them with what they need to confidently and successfully contribute to society. Today, the foundation is led by its president, Monique Brown, who has been actively involved in the organization for more than 25 years. The Amera ICANN Foundation continues its work in memory of its founder, actor, philanthropist, and NFL legend Jim Brown. To get involved or make a donation, please visit AmeriCanCommunity.Partners. That's AmeriCanCommunity.Partners. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. My mom has taken up going to the park to practice yoga. My dad's going to a club, but not a book club, a salsa club. Finding new hobbies comes with age. My mom has started getting lost and not knowing where she's going. Becoming lost or disoriented doesn't. Confusion with time or place may be a sign of Alzheimer's. An early diagnosis can help improve the quality of life for your loved one. Learn the warning signs of Alzheimer's at 10signs.org. Brought to you by the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. Heard the catchphrase that's sweeping the nation? Jackson, Hugh, yeah! 
People are saying Jackson Hue yeah to Jackson Hewitt because they love saving money on tax prep. Do you love saving money? Then switch to Jackson Hewitt today and pay less than last year. Thousands of people have already made the switch. Why haven't you? Stop waiting and start filing. You won't get a better deal or a better catchphrase. All together now. Jackson Hue yeah! Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Ready to re-examine your assumptions and expand your inventory of ideas? More of Tavis Smiley coming your way right now. More of Mark Lamont Hill coming your way right now, at least for the next four minutes. Four minutes I have left in this hour with him. Always delighted to have him on this program. Um, We discussed some breaking news regarding Donald Trump earlier in this hour, and that is that Donald Trump, uh, we are told, is going to sue the judge in Manhattan to try to, again, slow down this trial try to avert this trial and run out the clock. So he's going to sue the judge in Manhattan in the case brought by the black DA, Alvin Bragg. This is the Stormy Daniels porn case that he's trying to uh, trying to slow down. We will see what happens in the coming days if and when he sues the judge. Uh, but that is, um, uh, that is the, um, the story about uh, Donald Trump. Now to Joe Biden uh, in these last three minutes with Mark Lamondi, there's some breaking news there. President Biden announces today his plan to cancel student debt, Mark Lamont Hill, for more than 30 million Americans by this fall, kicking off, uh, of course, an election year sprint to deliver on this promise he made a while ago that was thwarted uh, the first time around by the U.S. Supreme Court. You couple that with a major story out today. I was reading uh, earlier that some colleges in the next uh, year um, uh, next school year, will start charging as much as $100,000 per year. Some of these schools now, uh, how, how that price has even risen to 100 k per year, I don't even understand. But that's what we're up against. So on the one hand, there are colleges now that are going to be charging $100,000 a year or better on the one side. And on the other, other side, president trying to relieve student debt uh, for 30 million people um, uh, before this clock runs out on this issue. Your thoughts about all of that? I think it's a, a wonderful idea. I'm, I'm excited by it. I think this one may survive the legal challenges. Uh, you're talking about 25 million borrowers uh, is, 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 is something significant. It's going to be a narrower base, so I just want people to know that. You know, uh, He has to target specific groups of borrowers in order for this to work, and specifically those facing financial hardship. And I know a whole everybody listening, like, look, I got financial hardship. If you got loans, you got financial hardship. But it's going to be a much higher threshold in order to survive to survive the legal challenges uh, that they faced before. So I don't know how many people this will actually touch, but it's the right thing to do uh, as you go into a strategically as you go into a presidential run. So it'll be exciting to see what happens. Uh, but we need more than that. We need a we need a radical political vision. We shouldn't be paying for. I mean, private education is one thing, but we shouldn't be paying significant amounts of money for public universities anyway. Everyone u- universities should be free. Mm. Uh, and that's being said by a professor uh, for almost 20 years now. Um, let, me, let, me, let me close on this note. i got about a minute to go. Um, I wonder whether or not you think in the long run this will aid in the bet, Joe Biden. I, I tied this uh, this move today, of course. It's, it's all election season stuff. He's going to be th- doing everything he can, obviously, as he should, to win this election. I don't know what impact this will have on voters, no matter how young they may be, that he's relieving um, certain student loan debt. But at this point... Um, how are you feeling about the campaign that Joe Biden is running? I think he is running the same old classic campaign of look at me, look at him, look at me, look at him. Mm-hmm. And and hoping that people will be so afraid that they'll vote their, again, they'll vote their fears and not their dreams or their aspirations. Um, and I think it might work, you know, mm-hmm. between Trump's messiness, between the lawsuits and, and, and some of these moves that Biden's making. It might be an, a successful campaign, but it's not good for our democracy. It's not good for liberation. It's not good for justice. Yeah. Uh, beautifully said, uh, brilliantly said, um, eloquently said, as is always the case when Mark Lamania opens his mouth. Uh, honored to have you on this always. Um, check out his YouTube channel, uh, Mark Lamont Hill Official. Uh, that's where you find it, Mark Lamont Hill Official. He does some great work on his YouTube channel. I love checking him out there and love having him on this program here. Mark Lamont Hill, all the best to you, my friend. Talk to you soon. Love you, brother. Love you back, man. Nothing you can do about it. More of Tavis Smiley when we come forward. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. 
I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. Experts are out with an important reminder today that taking pictures of a partial eclipse with your phone could damage your eyes and your camera. Today's upcoming eclipse will be total for a narrow strip across a dozen or so states, but in areas where the eclipse is partial, extra precautions should be taken before taking pictures. In Illinois, family, friends, residents, Yarborough was the first black person and woman elected to the Cook County Clerk's Office. The 